Good morning, and it's a joy to have you with us on this glorious Saturday morning. Uh, boy, the temperature was just perfect this morning. You know, we were in the, the mid to high 50s, and I absolutely loved it. But uh, I welcome all of you on this Saturday morning. And this morning, we're going to talk about, um, as Christians, sometimes we deal with things. We, we deal with suffering. We, we deal with pains of the world. And, and uh, it doesn't mean that we aren't any, any more blessed. Um, but before we get any further and go into 2 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, let's first uh, begin as we always do and go to the Lord in prayer. But this morning, let's uh, go to the Lord and, and let's recite that greatest of prayers, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, well again, welcome, and uh, I have some news. I meant to be sharing it throughout the week, and I had kept forgetting. Um, but we're going to uh, begin devotion times at a different time beginning next week, and we're going to try it out. I want to hear from all of you, so please email me, text me, call me, uh, message me on Facebook. Um, but I'm looking, we're going to be starting devotions beginning Monday morning at 7 a.m., and um, I realize for some people, maybe seven's too early for others. It's a great start to the day. And then the following week, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do an evening devotion. Uh, so for those who like to do a devotion before they go off to bed, uh, so we'll be looking at an evening devotion. We'll talk more about that, but I'd like to hear some of your feedback. I want to really, you know, hit as many people as we can who uh, can enjoy the devotion uh, live possible. So I look forward to hearing from all of you. And uh, again, good morning to all. Good morning, Ruth and uh, Marianne. Good morning. And, and to my wife, who's at a farmer's market in Milwaukee this morning. She said she would not be joining us, but wanted me to send her love to all of you. Uh, so let us begin uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Make room in your hearts for us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have taken advantage of no one. I do not say this to condemn you, for I said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. I am acting with great boldness towards you. I have great pride in you. I am filled with comfort. In all our affliction, I am overflowing with joy. For even when I came into Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted at every turn, fighting without and fear within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only be by his coming, but also by the comfort with which he was comforted by you. As he told us of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoice still more. For even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it, for I see that the letter grieved you, though only for a while. As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting, for you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. For we see what e earnestness this godly grief has produced in you, but also what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what punishment. At every point you have proved yourselves innocent in the matter. So although I wrote to you, it was not for the sake of the one who did the wrong, nor for the sake of the one who suffered the wrong, but in order that your earnestness for us might be revealed to you in the sight of God. Therefore, we are comforted. And besides our comfort, we rejoice still more at the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. For whatever boasts I made to him about you, I was not put to shame. 
But just as everything we said to you was true, so also our boasting before Titus has proved true, and his affection for you is even greater. As he remembers the obedience of you all, how you received him with fear and trembling, I rejoice because I have perfect confidence in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And, and certainly Paul's referring to the previous letter that he sent out to the Corinthians. And, and he sent out that letter, as you recall, uh, there were some admonishments uh, to the people of Corinth. They had begun getting puffed up. They had begun going uh, different ways. They were not acting as one in the body. And uh, praise be to God, though, they received that letter. It's like going to church right on Sunday morning and, and hearing the law and being brought to your knees and repenting for your sins. And then you receive that gospel. And, and so Paul is is thanking them. He, he has heard that they have, have repented. He has heard that they heard the words that he penned on the letter and, and they've turned from their ways. And, and, and yet Paul in the beginning of this chapter talks about the afflictions that he and the others have been going through and the pains and the struggles and, and to hear this good news from Titus and how it lifted him up. And, and so I was kind of reminded, and, and perhaps maybe some of you have had situations like this in your own life, where perhaps things aren't going so well for you. But then you get word about somebody, uh, maybe it's a, a family member, maybe it's a, a dear friend of yours, who, who has, has recognized uh, their absence from church. Uh, you know, I've had several wonderful examples this week of church members from Emmanuel who have who have shared with me that they have been inviting people to church, uh, inviting people who hadn't been going to church uh, to come and, and to come to Emmanuel and hear the word of God. And, and what a wonderful gift. I mean, as I told both of these individuals who shared this with me, they had made my entire week just to hear that that people are hearing God's call, his plea to go out and share the good news and then to see the fruits and to hear of those fruits that are taking place. Um, I could have had the worst week in the world and and the news that, that was delivered to me by these individuals um, would have wiped it all away. And that's what we hear from Paul as well as, as Titus comes and shares this good news with him. All the pain and the afflictions of the world that he and the others that he's traveling with, his companions are facing, um, just kind of melt away and you hear it in this letter. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, so we give thanks to God today and, and so let's go to him in prayer. But before we do that again, I just want to remind all of you who recently joined us, um, our devotions will be starting at 7 a.m. beginning Monday. Uh, we're going to be going to a new schedule partially because uh, school starts up in a week. So we all need to kind of get in practice and I'm speaking more to myself. So we'll have 7 a.m. devotions. If you're not a 7 a.m. person, uh, they will be already recorded. So they'll be there in the video section like so many of you have been watching. And then I'm thinking that the following week we'd try an evening devotion and see which one seems to work better for the majority of all of you. And so please email me, text me, call me, stop by. Let me know what your preferences are. Send a message on Facebook. Uh, but we would like to try to find a time that works best for the most of us that we can come together as the body in Christ. And uh, remember, tomorrow's worship service is at 1030. That'll be our last 1030 service. We're going to go back to our regular scheduled hours uh, beginning next week. The elders have agreed we're going to have our worship services at 830 on Sunday and continue with our Monday night at 7 o'clock. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, you gave your servant John the Baptist to be the forerunner of your son, Jesus Christ, in both his preaching of repentance and his innocent death. Grant that we, who have died and risen with Christ in holy baptism, may daily repent of our sins, patiently suffer for the sake of the truth, and fearlessly bear witness to his victory over death. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace today and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.